Welcome to part 5 of the Industrial Data Management series. The achievement of smart manufacturing hinges significantly on the robustness of its core data architecture. This video delves into how MQTT SparkPlug enables an efficient smart manufacturing data infrastructure. It does this by allowing the creation of a semantically structured depiction of the organization structure and events, known as the unified namespace. We will explore how to root the unified namespace architecture in the existing information organization of a manufacturing company. Such a conceptual structure is often found in enterprise applications like ERP or MES, organized hierarchically in accordance with the ISA 95 Part 2 standard. The following video will further explore these concepts, illuminating how MQTT SparkPlug and the Unified Namespace can effectively support smart manufacturing infrastructure. If you would like to watch the whole series on industrial data management, subscribe to our channel. Okay, let us get started with part 5. Presently, ISA 95 serves as the globally recognized standard for merging enterprise and control systems. It comprises both models and a standard vocabulary which can be utilized to identify the necessary information that needs to be transferred between various systems. This includes the transfer of data between sales, finance and logistics systems and those involved in production, maintenance and quality. This standard ensures smooth integration and data exchange, streamlining operations across different levels of an organization. The ISA 95 model represents a hierarchical structure of equipment entities, each having distinct organizational functions and relationships. Let us elaborate on these entities a bit further. The Enterprise this entity typically represents an organization with well-defined objectives. This could be an entire company, a subdivision, or a functional unit within a company, focusing on a specific product or service. The site. This refers to a physical or geographic segment of an enterprise. It could be a factory, a complex with multiple factories, or a single building. The specific definition of a site depends on the enterprise size and the organization of its various activities. The area. This is a physical, geographical or logical grouping within a site. It might encompass process cells, production units, production lines and storage zones. The production line. A facility that houses equipment dedicated to manufacturing a distinct product or a group of related products. It comprises all the necessary equipment to produce a specific product or component. Production unit. This is a facility that houses production equipment designed to transform, separate or react with raw materials to generate intermediate or final products. A process cell. This is a facility that houses production equipment used for a processing step in batch operations. A unit. This is an entity that adds value to a product for batch and continuous production. A work cell is an entity that adds value to a product for discrete manufacturing. The granularity of this model depends on a company's specific objectives Sometimes it can be extended to include equipment and control modules as per the S88 standard. The company needs to evaluate its work processes and information flow in alignment with its business goals. Determining what data will reside where and in what format within the unified namespace is a crucial aspect of designing your UNS data architecture. This decision shapes the type of information available for consumption and whether it can facilitate actionable analysis. The point is 
Structuring UNS data isn't merely about mapping isolated tags onto the UNS hierarchy. Instead, it requires a strategic approach that begins with identifying existing namespaces within your operation technology environment. This could include machine time series metrics like temperature, descriptive details like asset ID, profit and loss calculations, overall equipment effectiveness calculations, power consumption, and so on. The goal is to integrate these namespaces into suitable levels of a UNS hierarchy. Holker Reynolds, the architect behind the unified namespace concept and a strong advocate for it, suggests four types of namespaces for mapping OT data to UNS. For example, functional namespaces could be established for overall equipment effectiveness, covering all necessary parameters. Informative namespaces consist of abstracted data designed solely for consumption by software, data lakes, and other systems. Definitional namespaces encompass parameters that seldom or never change, such as an asset's installation date, and these namespaces can be positioned anywhere in the hierarchy. Lastly, ad hoc namespaces are unique to a specific organization, site, or production line, unlike standardized metrics like OEE. In essence, you'll end up with various types of namespaces at every hierarchical level within your organization. Some will be common across your organization, while others will be unique to a specific level. ISA 95 or a custom asset model essentially creates a semantic hierarchical representation of an organization structure. This structure allows for different sets of information to reside at various levels of the hierarchy, facilitating easy navigation and access to relevant data. For instance, if one wants real-time analytics for a specific production line, they can navigate the organizational structure to access the needed data. This approach is more efficient and reliable than coding or database scripting, which can be time-consuming and is not scalable. The added advantage here is that while humans can easily interpret meaning from a well-defined naming convention, machines cannot. However, if a machine understands the concept of hierarchies and the relationship between entities, it can autonomously find relevant information and act on it. This paves the way for the kind of automatic data-driven decisions that enable automation of business processes. Building a unified namespace involves creating a semantic hierarchy for your business based on ISA 95 or a custom asset model. Then collecting data from the operation technology side as discussed previously. After consolidating the data, it requires allocation to the appropriate levels of the hierarchy. This process results in a centralized repository of information with the unified namespace acting as a single source of truth for all data within an organization. It also becomes the central hub, replacing multiple point-to-point -point communication interfaces with a single interface. To implement the unified namespace, you need technology capable of organizing data centrally based on your organizational structure and events. The centralization allows network participants to access information easily knowing where and how to find relevant data. The technology should also ensure data transparency and availability to all authorized users. MQTT is a common technology used for implementing the unified namespace, with the MQTT broker acting as the central hub, as shown in the diagram. In this context, we adhere to the suggested ISA 95 common data model to align a Brooklyn company's organizational structure with the MQTT topic structure. This approach is beneficial because within MQTT's public subscribe architecture, subscribers can leverage the MQTT topic structure to filter messages using wildcard subscriptions. This offers all components linked to the MQTT broker, hierarchical data access, and data source location specification for a unified namespace. Nevertheless, MQTT Spark Plug 
extends this functionality. It enhances MQTT's capabilities by offering guidelines on structuring topics in a universally comprehensible way. The topic structure, as mandated by MQTT Spark Plug, is as follows. This refers to the Spark Plug encoding mechanism being used. For example, here reference is made to Spark Plug B encoding, which uses Google Protobufs. The group ID is a logical grouping of edge nodes. It can be used to group together edge nodes that are geographically close or that perform similar functions. The message type represents the type of the MQTT message. In Spark Plug, this could be a few different values, such as node command for a node command, DCMT for a device command, NBeth for a node path certificate, DBeth for a device path certificate, and data for node data or D data for a device data. H node ID, this is a unique identifier for the H node. An H node is a device that communicates directly with the MQTT server. Device ID is a unique identifier for the device that is communicating with the H node. Taking the Bockling company as an example, you can apply Sparkplug's defined topic namespace to your UNS structure in the following manner. Moreover, Sparkplug provides advantages such as payload definition, fostering interoperability by utilizing data types that are consistently interpreted across unified namespace ecosystem. It also offers session state management for all connected components. In this video, we explored the pivotal role of MQTT Spark Plug in establishing a robust data infrastructure for smart manufacturing, focusing on the creation of a unified namespace. In part 6, we will discuss industrial IoT data storage mechanisms and the generation of actionable insights to power your smart manufacturing needs. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.